Item number SCP-330. Object Class Safe. Special Containment Procedures. Considering recent incidents, SCP-330 is to be kept in secure storage until further notice. Level 2 clearance is required for access to SCP-330 or its contents. All direct experimentation of SCP-330 is to be conducted using Class D personnel with no genetic history of diabetes. No more than two samples are to be removed from SCP-330 at any time, except during exposure testing. Description SCP-330 appears to be a small, round, stainless steel bowl filled with a variable amount of individually wrapped pieces of candy. Taped to the side of the bowl is a handwritten note reading, Take no more than two, please. Attempts to remove the note have met with failure, as have attempts to hide or obscure it. Testers have noted finding it impossible to avoid reading the note, and those who approach it from an opposite angle are aware of this request. When a quantity of candy greater than two pieces is removed, regardless of the means involved, the offender instantly has both hands severed at the wrist by an unknown method. Tests involving remote manipulation by Class D personnel resulted in the operator's hands being removed despite no direct contact. Inspection of the incision reveals that the cut is made at a molecular level, leaving no tool marks or identifying factors. It is to be noted that the third piece must be removed within a certain time frame. After 24 hours, the count resets and additional candy can be removed. Discovered three days after Halloween of Redacted, when a police investigation into what was believed to be a case of ritualistic dismemberment was launched. SCP-330 was seized as evidence, but all attending officers were killed after Officer Redacted emptied the bowl of its contents. The cause of death was a result of data expunged. Foundation agents, under the guise of federal agents, recovered the object with acceptable casualties. Addendum Due to continuing security issues, SCP-330 will be held in Dr. Kondraki's office when not required for testing. Experiment Name, Researcher Vought Date, Redacted Subject D-3301, a double amputee equipped with prosthetic forearms and hands, was told to remove three pieces of candy from the bowl. Subject complied with no immediate effects. However, within 45 seconds, subject reported a burning itch from both his arm stumps. Right arm, 2 cm below elbow, left arm, 1.5 cm below elbow, and phantom pains from both his absent wrists. Subject's distress at this discomfort increased rapidly. Within 180 seconds of having removed the third candy from the bowl, the subject began forcibly removing both his own prosthesis. Upon hurling the prosthesis to the ground, subject reported that the discomfort had ceased. Dermatological examination of subject stumps revealed no unusual irritation or inflammation. Mechanical examination of subject's prosthesis revealed that, in addition to the physical damage sustained by being curled to the ground, the prosthesis had data expunged. Subject was supplied with fresh prosthesis, identical to the first pair, but reported feeling that it was wrong to put them on. Coercion was applied, and subject reluctantly put on left prosthesis. Note, Subject is right-handed. However, when told to put on right prosthesis, subject began weeping incoherently and flailing his arms until the left prosthesis detached itself. Analysis of video footage revealed that subject had not properly attached the left prosthesis to his stump. Mechanical examination of left prosthesis revealed only physical damage sustained from being thrown across the room. 24 hours later, subject was given fresh processes and reported no difficulty in putting them on. Subject not terminated, as D-class amputees who are already used to their processes are in short supply.